Hi everyone, it's Ryan here with uh, Real Talk with Ryan. We're doing episode one, and today on the show, uh, I'll be talking about how I got suspended on Twitter and a few other things, a few other news updates. Today is uh, January 28th, 2021, and so let's get right into it. So, uh, yeah, today I got suspended on Twitter. I don't know why. Um, I have a few ideas as to why. So, um, I, I shared a post um, linking to pocketnet.app, which is a blockchain social media um, website. And so I think that might be why, but yeah, um, I got, I have 30, I had 34.8 thousand uh, followers on Twitter and I got suspended today. So you can kind of see here, this was my account. It's not showing the followers right now, but that was my so I, um, my Twitter profile. As you can see, I'm the president of the Hartwick Foundation for Free Speech. And you can see here that I'm official. I'm an Arizona nonprofit corporation. And so they suspended my account. Um, so yeah, this is crazy. I mean, this is nuts. And I'm, I, in the last month or so, I've lost about 10,000 followers on Twitter ever since the January 6th um, Capitol event. Uh, so I ha initially I had about 43,000 that dropped down to about 34,000. So, see so that really sucks. Um, so here's, you can follow my, my Hartwig Foundation for Free Speech, Hartwig underscore free, but I'm also on Gab as well, at Real Ryan Hartwig, and I'm trying to focus on that some more. Um, so a few things I'm working on right now. Um, here's, I mean, let's see here. These are just some articles I was reading. So this is a great video I watch. If you want to watch it, um, it's from the producer of The Hunger Games, and he talks about Hollywood pedophiles. I mean, and it it, it lends, brings a lot of legitimacy to the whole argument because you can have you know, you can have cute people talking about this or or you know they try to, people talking about these weird, crazy conspiracy theories. This guy was actually worked in Hollywood for twenty years, and he's talking about what he experienced. Um, see if there's anybody. Amazon came back to it for alternative platforms where we can release this movie and get it out to as many. So anyways, he's looking for alternative platforms. Once again, a Hollywood producer who's saying that he's getting censored because he's talking about you know, human trafficking and Hollywood pedophiles. So, I mean, this is, this problem has become mainstream. It's not just some, not just crazy wackos on the right or Q. This is mainstream. This is the producer of the Hunger Games talking about it. Um, I, for those of you who don't know, I graduated from Arizona State University in 2015. And I was, I was active in their, their college Republicans group. And there's a group that's, uh, there's a group called College Republicans United that's, that's getting shut down on campus. Here's a video of them getting shut down. Go up to come and, and see me speak. And I asked her about what that, what would happen with that. And she said, of course, situations like that will happen and you have to welcome them in. Strongly encouraged that they don't, but if they show up, you know, you, you can't, can't enforce you can't it. turn them away. I have it. I have the voice recording of our phone call. You want me to play it for you? And he's not going to be able to interact with them because. Um, so you have ASU faculty here shutting down. You know, there's the, the, big the ASU policy this event. in place. <laughs> no. Once again, you have these these technocrats, these bureaucrats here at Arizona State University trying to shut down campus events, and the masks probably have something to do with it. I, I'm not sh I'm not sure exactly why they're getting shut down, but. Um, there's a lot of controversy with with all the events they've been having, and they're trying to have in-person meetings there at, at on, on campus. And another project I'm, I'm working on is uh, with Brazil Parallel. They're a, a, a very reputable documentary studio in Brazil. I went to their headquarters in Sao Paulo um, in September of last year, about three months ago, and they're working on a documentary, a new documentary in for a U.S. audience that talks about big tech's influence, and they're looking for people to interview. So if you know someone prominent or someone that would be willing to, to do a five-minute interview for this documentary, that would be great. I'm trying to help with that. Um, but yeah, they, the, it's a, they have a very high production value, very high quality interviews um, and documentaries. Uh, so this is an article about the storming of the Capitol. If you're really confused, I mean, we all know what went down on the cap at the Capitol. I was there on January 6th in D.C. It was... Uh, very, very peaceful. There was about, I think there was at least 2 million people there. And I listened to Trump's speech. I did not hear any incitement of violence. Uh, here's a really good article written by Miriam Hanine, who I know. 
uh, that really goes to the details of what happened there. She was there, she took video, and she goes through and identifies what's, you know, a lot of a lot of the details that we don't hear about in the media. And it's very objective. It's very, it's from someone who's there. Um, it talks about Ali Alexander, a few other people. And I actually know the guy, the the, the QAnon guy. They're not, yeah, the, the, the guy with the horns. Uh, I forget his name, Jake. Uh, I knew him. I, I met him at many rallies here in Arizona. And so, um, yeah, I, I don't know. There's a lot. I don't know what went, went down. There was a lot of crazy stuff going down, but once again, this this they're, they're calling it a, a storming or a capital. I don't even try to use the word storming because it pales in comparison to the millions of dollars of damage caused by Antifa this past summer. This is nothing compared to that. I mean, you had two million people and maybe a couple couple thousand at most were were causing havoc. So uh, you can read this uh, article. It's activistpost.com. I'll put a link here in the description. So, um, and this, the last thing I want to talk about is just about the Wall Street bets. And um, I guess sh um, GameStop was shorted or they shorted the uh, the stock somehow. And so now as retaliation, Discord is banning this Wall Street bets group. And there's also some something going on with uh, Robinhood, this, this app. So uh, this is a really good read. You can go to rec reclaimthenet.org. They're a great source for reading about big tech news. I read them all the time. So the the um, on the same that they did, so one of the tactics the mainstream media uses is to amplify calls for regulators to step in and manage the situation. Such calls place pressure on big tech platforms to take action and suppress the conversation themselves. And on the same day that these calls started to circulate in the mainstream media, community chat app Discord has banned Wall Street Bets, a popular online community that gave a huge boost to, to stocks such as video game retailer GameStop for hate speech. So the server had received multiple warnings, supposedly. Uh, but this community had over 250,000 members, and they 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 were, you know, they had were trying to ban certain words. So the response from uh, Wall Street Bets is, "We're su suffering from success, and our dis Discord was the first casualty. You know as well as I do that if you gather 250,000 people in one spot, someone is going to say something that makes you look bad. That room was golden, and the people that run it are awesome." We blocked all bad words with a bot, which should be enough. But apparently if someone can say a bad word with weird Unicode Icelandic characters and someone can screenshot it, you don't get to hang out with your friends anymore. Discord did us dirty, and I am not impressed with them destroying our community instead of stepping in with the wrench we may have needed to fix things, especially after we got over 1,000 server boosts. That is pretty unethical. So guys, the censorship is real. It's happening every day. Um, I'm trying to fight against that. We're working on some initiatives to give to local state legislators um, to, you know, have them pledge to fight against big tech. So if you want to support my work, uh, I'll put a link down below. Um, I do have a 501c3 sponsor so I can receive, receive tax deductible donations. And I have PayPal, Venmo, the whole the gamut. So guys, thanks so much for your support. Thanks for watching this video. I'll be posting this on Rumble and a few other video platforms. Um, and I'm on social media, uh, Gab, everywhere as at Real Ryan Hartwig. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you have a great week, and uh, I'll talk to you later.